addressing critical needs for partnerships for productive, resilient, and sustainable food systems for Africa. We are happy to have you all here. Before we start a few announcements, uh, this session will be recorded. All questions will be entertained in the question and answer section after the panelists completed their presentations. So please type your questions in the Q&A box. Our esteemed panelists, please be reminded to put your mic, mic off or mute and turn off your camera uh, when you are not presenting to avoid any background disturbances. Uh, as uh, mentioned by Nina, you will have 10 minutes for your slot. We also invite our audience to expand the discussion and engage with us via the social media accounts. Please post your uh, thoughts using the hashtag CDIR at TCAD8. So without further ado, uh, let me proceed with the program. It is no secret that achieving goals as big as eradicating poverty, mitigating climate change, and creating a food and nutrition secure future Africa require the cooperation of numerous entities and stakeholders starting uh, or sharing the same uh, vision. This is why uh, the core mandate of the CDIR is to focus on enriching partnerships, knowledge, assets, and global presence that help us to create impact on the ground. Japan has been one of our most steadfast allies, allies uh, in this mission, especially in, in the initiatives across Sub-Saharan Africa, almost for about 50 years now, from breeding climate resilient varieties, training farmers and uh, specialists on modernized techno uh, technologies, including production of high quality seed, to embarking on a joint research that facilitated the release of over 200 rice varieties in the region, including the Americas. To develop and apply digital tools for outreach, like the rice advice, these efforts, particularly under the framework of the Coalition for Africa Rice Development, or CARP, have helped both the rice uh, yield, farmers' income, youth employment and women employment and empowerment, besides many other accomplishments with enormous impacts in the region already. Indeed, our partnership with the Japan has been extremely fruitful over the past five decades or so. In fact, in 2022, Japan has further acknowledged the CDIR contribution to agricultural research by, recognize, by recognizing uh, one of our STEAM scientists, Dr. Uh, Kazuku uh, Seto, the Africa Rice uh, Center agronomist at the 21st century uh, Hope Prize Laureate of the 7th Niigata International Food uh, Award. It's a really a great recognition for us. But these are just a few examples of what we have been achieving together. Uh, we now are entering a new era where the CDIR centers are coming together to form a more cohesive platform for scientific research and innovations with exciting new portfolios, including global and regional international initiatives in Africa to be implemented in partnership with international and local institutions. You will hear about two of these regional integrated initiative, initiatives later in this session. This is a backdrop of our session today. And our first speaker is none other than Dr. Harold Roy McCauley. Harold has nearly 30 years of experience in agricultural research for development with extensive leadership and management expertise. He is uh, currently uh, managing director regions and partnerships of the CDIR and director general of Africa Rise. Today, he will be presenting on co-create solutions, leverage synergies, and accelerate impact at scale in Africa. Harold, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Abdel. Um, it's a pleasure being here. And um, as Abdel has just mentioned, um, 
Um, the partnership, uh, the, the, the CJR is, has been working for several years, over 50 years now, on generating technologies and, um, and innovations. Um, um, we have made a, a great impact, and I'll talk about this um, very quickly. Um, we have also, we want to acknowledge the partnership that we've had with, um, through some of our centers, some of the CJR centers, especially Africa RICE, working on RICE. Um, with, uh, with, um, with Japan, and I think it's very important to acknowledge this here. So um, um, when we talk about co-creating solutions and leveraging synergies, um, we want to do this with a specific objective of, of accelerating impact, and not just any impact, because we've been having impact, but impact at scale in Africa. So um, I'll take you through, um, next slide please, I'll take you through the the, the presentation that I had and, and the work that CJ has done for over 50 years. Some of these are key. And I'll this might show some of the examples in terms of what we have done on wheat, almost half the world's wheat land is sold to, to the varieties that come directly or indirectly from research by CJ scientists. Um, if you're looking at rice in particular as well, um, we have had global benefits of improved rice varieties which um, we can quantify um, in terms of dollars, and this is roughly about 10.8 billion annually. And a special reference should be made to Nerica varieties, which have brought food security to 7 to 7.2 million people in Africa. We can talk again about the orange flesh um, sweet potato, which is a nutrient and wheat variety that has reached um, 29 million across 16 African countries. And then um, these are helping to increase income for our producers while providing nutrition value as well. And this is this is work that has been pioneered by SIP. CJR's work on crop variety has reduced infant mortality by a third across the world, um, in, across the developing world, averting between three and six million infant deaths this year. This is very significant and it should be mentioned. And in terms of um, 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 assessment and um, evaluation, we have shown that um, CGI innovations in Ethiopia have potentially reached 11 million rural Ethiopian households, which is nearly 80% of all rural households in that country. So uh, very great, um, um, I would say, leader in agricultural science and innovation for development through the, the various um, um, impacts that I have just mentioned. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of our assets, um, how do we actually um, come about doing all of this? I think um, we need a strong assets, and this is demonstrated by um, some of the, 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 the figures that we're seeing here. 9,000 plus research and support staff based in CGI research centers who are able to respond to emerging development issues at all times. We are in uh, 108 countries. Um, where we are pioneering knowledge of local values and market operations in, in, in these in this developing countries. Um, we shouldn't also forget the job class of accession. That's a weak asset that we have 770,000 plus job pillars in ac accessions um, among the largest and most frequently accessed network of gene banks in the world. Big um, genetic resources and base that we have. 3,000 3, plus partners including national governments, universities, policy bodies, private companies, and NGOs. And we're seeing how best we could enhance and, and, and create and make this partnership more, more, more visible. And obviously, 50 years of experience, a track record of innovation, and world-class research, I should say. Next slide, please. And um, so, um, after having said all this, um, we're talking about a global recognition for the role of CGI, which is emerging. And I'd just like to put um, the CGI System Council. These are the group of donors that are supporting us, that the greatest assets of CGI and a key reason for support are its talented people, its partnerships, its global presence, and its record of impact. If CGI comes together as one, we believe our work can have even greater value. So CGI was operating as individual centers, and the donors are saying, if we come as one, we believe we can have even greater value. Next slide, please. 
So um, within this context, and obviously um, within the context of transforming the broken foods, land and water systems, we have a mission. And like, it's not only the mission of CGIR, but the mission of all um, um, interested, um, um, interested stakeholder in, 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 in food and, and um, agriculture and, and food systems. The world is facing increasingly complex and interconnected challenges. Um, healthy diet, we have noticed, is unaffordable to more than 3 billion people. And this is impacted by a um, looming global food crisis triggered by a conflict as well. We see what's happening um, in Ukraine, um, Russia, and, what's, and the effect that it's having on, 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 on food and um, this food system. Now, we are just recovering from COVID-19 pandemic. And we're having all these issues that we have to deal with. Climate change poses major risks for agriculture. Greenhouse gas and emissions are produced by agri-food systems. We have to take that into consideration. And we know that agriculture is the biggest driver of biodiversity loss and the single largest user of fresh water. This is a big challenge. And um, get, having in mind that women are agents of change, but they have only equal access and use um, face limited work opportunities. If you bring these two together, these two workforce together, we show that we're going to have make um, great impacts. Now, if we're talking about the, the, the potential asset that we have once we have, and within the context of these um, challenges, and our donors are saying, the system council is saying, and many of our partners are saying that if we can pull our assets together, we'll have greater value. And I think that is something that we're looking at. And I'm, the, the CGI has gone further with that. Can I have the next slide, please? Next slide. So we're taking a systems approach in view of all these problems, uh, these challenges that I've just mentioned. Um, we need that to take it um, to, to, to meet these very complex and intricate challenges. Because the scale and nature of the challenge requires food systems to urgently adopt and advance this particular approach which will take account into account people, supply and value chains, water, land, inputs of food systems. And such a system with approach requires a powerful and unified global effort. So we're coming back to the fact that we should be unified and we should come together if we want to do great things. Next slide, please. So that is why we're talking about one CGIR. So we're talking about CGIR and we're talking about one CGIR. Now, the aim is to bring together our partnerships, knowledge, and global presence, enabling a system-based response to challenges and greater impact. So that's what we're doing. We're talking about a unified and integrated CGR, which we believe is much better equipped to tackle threats to this challenge, threats that we face, including threats to food, to nutrition, water security, which is posed by um, um, climate change. And we are also talking about an integrated operation structure. And um, most times when we talk about structure, people tend to say, well, we, you know, we don't worry about the structure, but we want to see what impact you create. But if you don't look at the structure that we're putting in place, we'll never have the capacity to actually create that impact at scale that we want. So that's why we're talking about this integrated operation structure, which maintains one CGI centers. Very important, the centers are still there while boosting co collaboration, innovation, and efficiency. And what we're seeing here is that the contents of this, it involves more pooling, unified governance, governance structure, integrated um, operational structure, one CGI policies and services, and one CGI at country and regional level. This is in order to improve and uh, uh, footprints right down to the ground, countries, regions, and countries, and a new research modality. And which is we are including a compelling mission for one CGR, which we have just mentioned, that is to transform food, land, and water systems in a, in a climate crisis. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So um, I would just like to focus on since we're talking about um, um, science and innovation, I would like just like to focus on the new framework for science and innovation that we have um, actually developed. Um, this is a new research and innovation strategy that adopts a system transformation approach in line with what I've just mentioned. 
um, a systems approach to respond to intricate and complex um, challenges. We have a new portfolio um, in, in, which consolidates our work into three science groups and the systems transformation initiatives, resilient agri-food systems initiatives, and genetic innovation. There are 33 of them. And then we including the regionally integrated initiatives. And we will have more of this um, in the presentations that follow. But this is our portfolio and working around this. But it's important to know that these target five impact areas that are in line with the sustainable development goals. Nutrition, health and food security, poverty reduction, livelihoods and jobs, gender equality, youth and social inclusion, climate adaptation and mitigation, and environmental health and biodiversity. So we're not doing this alone. It's not a standalone process. But we're also looking at how we can contribute to achieving the sustainable um, development goals. And these initiatives have been really been thought about. I mean, we, we've really worked on them and they're responding to creating impact in these areas. Um, like I said, some of these um, initiatives will be presented later in this, in, this, um, in this session. Next slide, please. Now, another important focus is on country regional partnerships, and this is for research delivery. The CGR is known as a strong in, 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 in institution and um, for um, delivering science, but we want to improve our, foot, our footprint. So we have, um, we are working in six regions in the world. So we have Southeast Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, West and Central Africa, Southeast um, um, West and South and East, East and Central, um, and Central and West Asia and North Africa, and then Latin America, and then East and Southern Africa. So we have these six regions, and we're working in these six regions to deliver um, um, impact. Next slide, please. I think I have only one minute. Um, next, move on to the next slide, please. Next slide. Um, so, um, whilst we're doing this, we want to create a collaboration that allows um, co-creation, obviously, and co-creation, co-designing, and participatory technology generation. This is very important. Strong partnerships to transform to as part of the transformation process, and that's what CGI is doing. And um, we have looked at we are looking at how to increase this um, partnership um, across um, our stakeholders, and we're putting in place mechanism that will help us to. And we have advisory panel to oversee partnership engagement and a new engagement framework for partnership and advocacy. And through these tools, we'll be able to speak to our partners and bring them on board so that we can all work together towards them addressing these challenges. Next, next slide, please. I wouldn't stop by in stop my presentation without talking about uh, the, the, the partnership that we have with Japan, which has been very, very fruitful. Um, Abdel has mentioned some of them, but we have had a long history of fruitful cooperation since 1972 with Japan, um, working with different um, student organizations um, in Japan, including JICA and JICA, JICAS. Um, we have flagship achievements, I would mention some of them, the World Moon Nerika Rice, Smart Valleys Approach for Land and Water Management. Abdel just mentioned the Rice Advice, which is a decision support tool to boost rice productivity. Not forgetting capacity building to create sustainability of our scientists through the Japan Capacity Building Program for African agriculture. And in view of new global challenges, including climate change, a strong partnership between Japan and Sidra is more important than ever before. So we're calling for that. Um, um, he mentioned that um, one of our Africa rice, one of the Africa rice scientists, Dr. Kazuki Saito won the 21st Century Hope Prize of Japan's Nigata International Food Award in 2020. This is a the demonstration of the, the partnership we have. And as I said, this is a partnership that we treasure, we cherish, and we would like to continue in Africa. Next slide, please. In conclusion, we know from this that once there is bolder and more operationally integrated institution, and we're now a stronger global, regional, and local partner of choice, for food systems transformation. We are growing our funding, which will enable us and our partners to do more for and with smallholder farmers, especially. We are doubling our investments in research and innovation um, and, and to end hunger, eradicate poverty, and fight climate change by 2030. 
and we plan to raise um, two, $2 billion dollars by um, $2 billion by 2030 to support this transformational work together with partners. And with CGI research and innovation providing 10 to 1 return on investment funding, the new um, um, the new initiative provides a clear path to impact for people and planet. Um, this is just a, a, a quick an overview of what the CGI intends to do in terms of transforming food and water systems. How it works, it, it wants to work with this partnership, and especially how we can actually um, um, you know, um, continue and strengthen our partnership with Japan. Thank you very much for, for giving me this opportunity to see these fields. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Harold, for this overview, um, uh, and also for highlighting the impressive roles and impacts that the CDIAR uh, already have in, on food systems and nutrition security across the globe, and particularly in Africa. Further roles, uh, and also highlighting the further roles that uh, the CDIAR should be playing in the next phase, especially in cases of pandemics and uh, climate uh, disasters. These are issues that are really affecting um, us in Africa. And also, thank you for providing the overview of the current operational structure and of the CGIR, uh, including the research framework um, portfolio. Thank you so much for that. We'll come back to questions later at the end of the session. Uh, next, I'd like to um, uh, uh, call on uh, Dr. Yemi Akim Akimbamejo, the Executive Director of the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, or FARA, well, very well-known organization to us. Yemi is an agricultural expert with track records in leadership in food and nutrition security, rural development, and agricultural and environmental sciences. Prior to joining FARA in 2013, he was the head of Agricultural and Food Security Division at the United Nations Commission in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Today, uh, Yemi will be talking about the need for effective collaboration with country and regional stakeholders for food system transformation in Africa. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Akim Banido. Yemi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Abdel. I'd like to request that I be allowed to share my screen from here. Right now, I do not have such a right. Okay, now I've been given the right. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I can be heard very clearly and that my screen is also visible. As has been announced, I will be speaking very briefly on the subject as you see it on the screen. I want to say thank you very much to the organizers of the CGIR event on the margins of the TCAD 8 to have thought of Farah and myself to be able to speak on the subject of um, the need for effective collaboration with country and regional stakeholders for food system transformation in Africa. Well, I must start by saying that it was some sometime last year in the heat of the run-up to the Food Systems Summit in September last year, that FARA put out a series of five independent dialogue series to have a collective voice, a collective action on how Africa should position itself in the context of the food system transformation. And some of the things I'll be presenting today will be actually excerpts from that interaction. So my outline is looking first at the introduction, why we need the transformation and how to achieve this transformation. I will conclude with some key messages. But short of actually preaching to the converted, we know that the food system is at the heart of the SDG. But we cannot eliminate hunger and improve health um, without effectively um, engaging the totality of the African continent. The challenges that are involved with building truly sustainable systems are multidimensional, and that is where we see the need for a multiplicity of actors, a multi-stakeholder approach to be able to ensure that we have 
the whole scenario well covered. We also understand that this will involve examining the food system from a holistic approach rather than from a siloed approach. And in that case, we need to really find a modality of embracing all the voices that needs to be heard from across the continent and all the stakeholders that we do need to collaborate with. Why do we need this transformation? Africa is still the most hungry continent. Food insecurity is still a huge challenge. And we also understand that when you look at the biennial report of how Africa is faring with respect to the Malabo Declaration of 2014, only four countries out of 54 seem to be on track and stunting as an index of malnutrition is still very, very high in Africa compared to the global average. And we also understand that Africa is still a net importer spending a colossal 35 billion to import food, most of which it can produce by itself. And this figure in the next three years, this figure is projected to triple to 110 billion. And what has actually, again, undermined the capacity to hit our target is the outcome of the pandemic of COVID-19 that wrecked a lot of havoc and exposed the vulnerability of the continent in terms of our ability to really mitigate shocks. And then the most recent is issues of the Ukraine, um, Russia-Ukraine conflict, triggering massive food prices, rising input processes, reduction in export in agricultural commodities, and also the rising cost of fertilizers and energy. So these are all not agreeing well for the scenario we have in Africa. This then calls for an urgent need to assess the modalities of a collaborative holistic approach. So we realize that the current food systems, they're facing challenges in delivering healthy diets and reducing both hunger and malnutrition. And different actors at multiple scales also need to be engaged, as I said before, to better align our actions across the whole sector, not in a siloed sense, in order for us to have the desired transformation of the food system. Therefore, the African food system, the governance requires carefully um, laid orchestrated coordination of multiple actors and decision-making processes. And therefore, an integrated perspective will be needed to ensure that we have a robust approach to Africa's food issues. The conventional governance arrangement do not seem to have been able to help us. And this suggests that we need novel approaches on the, on the various food system actors for them to be able to work together and more cohesively in across the sectors, across administrative jurisdictions, across the public and private domain. Therefore, it is essential that we have a multi-stakeholder collaborative approach between the countries and regional stakeholders. And here, FARA and the SROs play a very, very significant role because we have what I call the transboundary approaches that allows us to leverage capacities across borders to be able to deal with the issues of governance arrangement and to facilitate food systems governance. Now, we will need to achieve this transformation through a collective of stakeholders. And the key players, and this is not a uh, non-exhaustive list, would be the policy organs like the African Union Commission, the regional economic communities, the farm organization, the science fraternity of the CG, the IAR for the institutions, FARA and the SROs, the National Agricultural Research Systems and, and the ministries, private sector, 
the multilateral development banks and the consumers and many others. So we need a, a, a whole lot of players who are the major actors at regional, continental, and at country levels. Now, achieving this transformation, how do we get there? There is a need to identify an individual or group of food system champions on the continent. And what will these champions do? These champions will escalate the attention and to advocate for the need for food systems approach. Like we have started from last year, we have a few champions, but more will be needed. We need to raise the awareness and speak at public events to spread the message concerning the key benefits of a systemic thinking. We need again to kind of organize trainings on food systems approach and to seek buy-in of the high level operatives. There is a need to conduct a holistic food system assessment that will help us to prepare a diagnosis that is based on food system lenses. We will need it also to provide the foundation for a political agenda and a cross-cutting dialogue within the government, and also to provide an in-depth understanding of the elements, drivers, and outcomes of the food systems, identifying who the main actors are. There is also the need for us to initiate a multi-stakeholder process for dialogue and action. As I said earlier on, we need all hands on deck to be able to address these colossal issue of food systems in the African continent. We need it to establish a permanent multi-stakeholder platform. We need it to create a joint vision and discuss areas of priorities, and then to link with existing development strategies and national commitments. I must also say that FARA in the context of the XP4 institutions, FARA is leading and is leading that organization. And we have this platform that is open to help have a cohesive action in the context of food system research. I also can say to you that one of the things happening in recent times, just two weeks, I mean, a week ago, last week, in Accra, the International Research Consortium of the High Level Policy Dialogue of the Africa and EU um, High Level Policy Dialogue is now launched. So that for us is a new kid on the block that will help us to have this kind of a systemic thinking with a multi, uh, multiple stakeholder approach. There is a need for also strengthen institutional capacity for long-term, Food system governance. In conclusion, in conclusion, I will say that it's important to rebuild the food systems of Africa through effective collaboration among stakeholders that will enable the continent to transform the food systems and build back better, even despite the effects of the war, the pandemic, and all that we've been dealing with. A few key messages need to build appropriate capacity is important. Important public investment in AR4D, we cannot do nothing without money. It's important to build and strengthen the solidarity across the collective actors, and then to enhance the capacity of farmers and consumers, harness potential of youth, and create a regional pool of financial resources. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and I yield the floor back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Yemi, for this very insightful uh, contributions. Um, you have very well highlighted the role of FARA, um, especially in bringing together transformation in Africa, arranging policies and the right players in the, across the continent, and also taking a holistic approach for our food systems. Uh, and also highlighted the serious shortage of food is still in the continent, despite having resources needed to be that and also the critical role for collaboration, which you also mentioned by Harold, aligning, uh, uh, aligning our local and international partners who really need the goals, um, in, uh, the goals of, of achieving food and nutrition security, and also the role of having champions and advocates that can help. I think it's a brilliant idea. Thank you so much for that.
in the sake of time now, we'll uh, move to our uh, next uh, presentation. Uh, next up in our, uh, is our colleague in CGIR, Dr. Amino Arona, uh, Rice Africa lead, leader of policy innovation systems and impact assessment program, and the CGIR lead for regional integrated initiative on transforming agri-food systems in West and Central Africa. Amino specializes in, resource, uh, in resources and environmental economy and impact assessment for technological and institutional uh, innovations using quantitative methods, and he's highly uh, published and very well known in this field. So we'll be talking today about one of the regional rice, regional uh, integrated initiative for West and Central Africa, titled Transforming Agri-Food Systems in West and Central Africa. And Aminu, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Shia. Um, I'm going to share my, my screen very quick. Um, yeah, um, you should be already able to see my screen. Uh, so as was mentioned, I'm going to present you briefly. Um, I think I did not put on my camera. Yes, okay. So I was trying to put back my camera. I think it's okay now. Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, regional integrative initiative uh, in Western Central Africa, which is named Transforming Agri-Food System in Western Central Africa. Uh, my talk will be around six points, basically. I will talk a little bit about the overall objective of regional integrative initiative and the overview and the design of the uh, transforming agri-food system initiative in West and Central Africa. And this will help me to present the work package and the theory of change of this initiative. And again, talk a little bit about the collaboration which uh, the other presenter has already mentioned, the expected delivery, delivery and then the way forward. So as you all know, uh, through the 2020-2030 uh, uh, research and innovation strategy, the CDR has basically two classes of initiative, have the global initiative and then have the regional integrated initiative. So the global initiative are more uh, thematic initiative, while the regional integrated initiative, as the name is mentioned, is really to work on how to transform agri food system within a boundary uh, planetary. So, and this is more regional focus, but in an, in an integrated manner. So this regional integrated initiative aim also to build on past experience of the CGR. So for instance, our past project like CISA, like that, we need to build on those experience in order to quickly achieve impact at scale. And for instance, for that initiative that I'm going to present, our objective will be basically to um, collaborate with existing project such as uh, Sialka. So this initiative also, we want to avoid duplication and we want to have uh, that the sum is more than just addition the part of this initiative. So coming back now to uh, the specific case of regional uh, integrated initiative for West and Central Africa. So this region covered basically 22 countries and we have put a partnership of center from uh, CGR and also non CGR center. Basically we have five uh, CGR center, which are Africa Rise, ITA, C, INI, Alliance, Barbers, uh, World Fish, and three non CGR, Coraf, World uh, Vegetable, and also ECA. So, for this country, we are using a phase in approach whereby we have selected uh, six countries where we want to start basically the activities. 
And this country are Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and Nigeria in West Africa. While in Central Africa, we have DRC, uh, Burundi, and, uh, and Rwanda. And the objective there is to be able to build on the past uh, project, especially the Shaka. And this, in the district country, we are going to work on how to achieve the five impact area of the CBA, on which I will come back later. So to design this initiative, we use a participatory and demand-driven approach. So it is really a participatory and uh, partnership approach that we do to build the initiative. To do that, we, 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 we first, in 2021, in June 2021, we conduct a structured stakeholder survey to see what are the constraints and what are aspects of the food that we need to work on in order to really transform our food system in West and Central Africa. And after this survey, we also uh, uh, make uh, a workshop consultation uh, that was led by Cora again in 2021. And during this uh, survey, we have a good participation. For instance, participant was from 12 countries, uh, from Africa, but also from other continents, by partners who are really interested by uh, Africa. So based on this consultation, we have developed a key research question. And these research questions are based on the challenges that we identify. Those challenges are basically related to climate change, food, market, youth, and women. And on this, uh, based on these challenges, we have developed uh, the priority of uh, the, the priority of science. And these priority are basically five. The first one is we want to work on how to make food system to be more nutritious, safe, and resilient. And the second point. Uh, uh, priority is how to promote the digital information, basically the digital agriculture. And the third point is regarding how to work on landscape management. You know, uh, we, are, we are working a long time on plot level, and we think it's very important now, based on the consultations, work on the landscape management. And the fourth point is how to address social barrier and create opportunity for equality for both youth and women. As you may know, the region has one of the highest unemployment rates of youth in, in the world. And the fourth point is also how to work in order to create impact at scale and also to accelerate this impact. And based on this priority, we develop basically five work package. So the work, the work package one, is everything related to uh, sustainable intensification and diversification. And the second work package is about digital agriculture for climate resilience, which I mentioned before. And the third work package is also related to sustainable and inclusive landscape management. And all these three work package will be converted to uh, the work package four, which is related to youth and women entrepreneurship model. And all this will lead to the work package five, which is relate, related to accelerated impact. And in addition to that, we have a special work package, which is dealing also with innovation platform. To be able to achieve the objective, we have developed a clear theory of change of how we are going to work. For instance, if I take the case of the work package four, the objective there is to uh, develop um, model for both transformative model in order to increase the gender equality, to give more opportunity for youth and women. And then uh, the different activities that we are going to conduct will help to increase uh, the gender equality. So to be specific, uh, the initiative we, we are working in phase in, as I mentioned before, first, Will, uh, the first phase will be working on transition and humid zone and also highland zone. And later, we'll continue to progress to the uh, semi-arid area. And in terms of commodity, we are working, of course, 
on root and tuba and banana, but also on cereal uh, base, legume, vegetables, and also fish. And this can show you how we are working. We are, we are trying to cover all the species that are very important in the, in the region. And to also be able to achieve the impact, there are already low hanging fruit innovation on which we want to build. For instance, we have nutrient plus innovation, like about 45, about 45 food on which we want to work. We have the seed system, climate smart agricultural technology, but also climate change advisory and early warming digital tools, on which I mentioned also the land scale management, but also policy and scaling innovation. And to be able to do that, as was mentioned before, we are really uh, working in collaboration with other initiatives within the CGA, but also with other programs which I mentioned before. And if you are able to do all this, our expected delivery are as follows. We are targeting around 80,000 small product farmers who will benefit from resilient climate nutrient dense crop in the three years. Of the I mean, we're project. running out of time, please uh, try to... Yes, yeah, that is my you last think. slide. Oh, sorry. You want. Um, so, the, the, in terms of way forward, uh, I skip the benefit on which uh, you can read later on my slide. So, the way forward is that the initiative we are trying to capitalize on the past project, which I mentioned, but also leverage on low hungry food innovation that I also present. So, to make more impact, uh, the, in, uh, the initiative is also working with the donors uh, to raise more funding in order to create impact on ground. So I will stop there. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Amino, for this uh, highlight and overview of this uh, very critical initiative for uh, uh, Western Central Africa. Um, the, the, uh, this integrative uh, initiative uh, will really help in transforming food uh, systems in, in that region and hopefully to the, uh, also work, I'm sure, to link very closely with other initiatives in Eastern South Africa and also in North Africa. Uh, the most important, I think, highlighted the strong partnership within CDIR and local and global partners. I think this is what makes our work now different from what we have been doing before and also as highlighted by uh, Yemi in his talk. So thank you so much for that. Uh, for the sake of time, I'll move now to our uh, second uh, presenter, uh, presenter uh, who uh, she's another one of our um, leaders in the region, Dr. Uh, Inga Jacobs Mata, very well known in the region already. Uh, Inga is a regional representative for Yemi. Uh, in South Africa and is also leading one of the CDIR uh, regional initiative in East and South Africa, which is famous for uh, Okama Usawi. She will tell us probably a little more about that. Inga is an expert in water governance, organizationalizing the water energy food nexus and it is, govern uh, it is governance framework, water stewardship, community-based approaches and supported self-supply, uh, hybrid water laws and environmental um, migration. She will be uh, talking to us again about uh, U2, um, uh, which is diversification for climate resilient agri-food systems in East and South Africa. Uh, please join me in warmly welcoming Inga. Inga, please, uh, uh, now the stage is yours. Thank you, Dr. Abdel, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I have uh, tried to, in, in, in the backstage, um, revise my presentation just to uh, save on time. But uh, should you be interested in hearing more about Ukama Ustawi, this is the regional initiative for East and Southern Africa. I'd be happy to, to share the slides. So what I've done was I would just uh, share a little video and one slide, uh, and then we can move to the uh, discussion. So I hope you can all hear this. Let me give it a try. For more than
than 300 million people in Africa, maize is the most important staple food. It's especially key in eastern and southern Africa, where it makes up 30% of daily food intake. While important to many Africans' diets, maize has low nutritional content, is vulnerable to climate change, and pests and diseases like fall armyworm. In response to this, the CGIAR has kicked off a regional initiative called Ukama Ustawi, which strives to support a climate resilient, water secure, and socially inclusive transformation of the region's agricultural sector. Ukama is a Shona word that refers to humanity's relatedness to each other, so partnerships, how we engage with each other and our biophysical world. Ustawi is a Kiswahili word um, referring to well-being, prosperity, development. Together they resemble the, the essence of what we're trying to do with this initiative. We're talking about scaling mechanisms and this would create a sort of enabling environment for the farmers to actually have access to these great innovations and, uh, so that we can actually use it in their fields. Developed by the region, for the region, Ukama Ustawi demonstrates how, through partnerships, research for development can lead to systemic change and impact on the ground. Our role as well fish is in several areas, including the bottlenecks that women, youth and marginalized communities are facing in accessing finance, technologies, in accessing the knowledge that they need in order to be productive farmers. We visit farmers across the country, we find out what their problems are, and then we bring in the experts from research, development, commercial sector partners to come and solve those problems. In Zambia, we're really excited because we'll be working with SMEs that have gone through an accelerator program. They've been selected and they've got some really good innovations happening on the ground. We'll be working with those SMEs to actually put them on the program. Uh, and then when this broadcasts out to millions of farmers, they can get in touch with us to find out more information on a really simple way. Ukama Ustawi will strengthen agribusiness sustainability by helping unlock private investment and supporting policies that can help improve market access for these farmers. The project is focused on the maize mix systems of East and Southern Africa, diversifying those systems, intensifying them at the same time, and developing innovation packages that we can deliver to farmers on their farm to help them accomplish to do that. And what we want to do to support the transformation of food systems for more affordable, sufficient, but also healthy diets, and then produced within planetary boundaries. Maize uh, is a very dominant crop, 35 million hectares in this, uh, this region. Part healthy, but not enough. So we need also other crops like legumes, like vegetables, to make it possible also to have an affordable, uh, but also healthy diet. If you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Great. Uh, so that just gives you a, a snapshot, folks, of, of what we are doing under Ukama Ustawi. Uh, as the video mentioned, um, we focus in these, these five areas. Uh, they make up the six work packages. Uh, and work has already been um, done, implemented uh, from, from the start of 2022. Our, our main focus looks at uh, diversification of maize mix systems. And this focuses on small scale mechanization, improved irrigation, conservation, agriculture, improved nutrition. And here we've already conducted all the feasibility studies. We've, we've mapped out uh, suitability. Um, and we, we're now moving uh, onto, onto farm on-farm interventions. Um, we also have a strong focus, as the video alluded to, on digital agro-advisories, and we're really excited here about a partnership with Shamba Shape Up, which is a reality TV show, a farm improvement show, and we're working with them to expand to other countries beyond their base country, which is Kenya. Um, we also um, uh, work strongly with the agribusiness ecosystem. So this year, we look forward to launching an accelerator program, um, which will be around scaling grants and technical assistance for agribusiness um, uh, owners. 
And then uh, not forgetting our work on policy, advisory, support to our governments, uh, support to our regional organizations. Uh, here we've set up a policy hub with our partners, our NAS partners, Asarika, Cardesa, Fanerpan, um, and really not a, not a, a separate standalone uh, platform, but this is really about embedding our work through these uh, partners that already have these platforms in place. And lastly, a very strong focus on scaling, both the practice of scaling as well as the science of scaling. Um, and we, we look forward to, to launching our, our scaling efforts uh, later on in the year, also in collaboration with some of our development partners uh, like GIZ. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, leave it at that, Abdel, and then we can just uh, take uh, questions and, and discussion afterwards. Thank you. Back to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh... Inga, I'm very sorry that you ran out of time. I know you have a lot to, to say, but thank you for giving this overview of uh, Okama's story. Um, and also stressing the focus on partnerships and also to be able to really uh, endure a systematic change across the region. Uh, good also to see uh, testimonies from people on the ground. I think there is no better witness than that of how this work is really transforming life for people on the ground. Thank you so much for that. Um, now, uh, we heard from our uh, esteemed speakers, it is time now to hear from our audience, but unfortunately we do not have much time, but we have said at the beginning that please post your questions either here or in the hashtag that's provided at the beginning, and we'll make sure that to get back to you. So let me now open the question and answers where you uh, uh, want to hear about your thoughts, your queries, uh, or even your feedback. Please also help us by mentioning the name, uh, your name, also the organization, and also the panelists that you wish to address a question to. We have two sets of questions. Some of them come earlier through emails, and also we have uh, questions that come through the Q and A uh, uh, box. So let me start with one question that comes through email. Uh, how can the CGIR ensure that with the integration of centers into one CGIR? ongoing partnerships and projects with individual CIR centers will continue and thrive. And I think the best person to answer that is Harold. Harold? So, sorry, Abdel, um, I didn't get the, the question. Yeah, let me read it again. Uh, how can the CIR ensure that with the integration of centers into one CIR, ongoing partnerships and projects with individual CGIR centers will continue and thrive, which means that how can we continue when carrying over to CGIR is still our partnerships and our projects that are going, this country will still continue. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. That's, that's um, a very um, interesting question and it's always asked. Um, <clears throat> I'll quickly just go through um, the, the point that um, there are two um, systems of funding, CJR, which, you know, as we know now. There's the pool funding, that is um, the global funding that comes in, where, um, which, which is actually distributed to initiatives, right? The, the portfolio, the initiatives of the portfolio. And we still have the, um, the, the bilateral funding that comes through. And these are funding that comes through, um, that are um, interactions between donors and centers. So we have, we, we, we still, the ones, ones that are still accommodated in these two types of, of funding resources. So, and um, there is no, um, there is no, should I say, um, reason why centers wouldn't work with funders or respond to funders who are interested in funding particular initiatives with them. And we have seen some examples, APRA is one, I mean, it's, it's a bilateral funding coming from the World Bank, where we have several centers involved, but at the same time, we have the initiatives going on. And at this particular moment, the World Bank is thinking of funding, um, for example, the resilient Food Resilient Program of Madagascar through one of our centers, to Africa Rise in Madagascar, but there will be several centers involved in this. So it's a mix, and, and I don't think there is a, there is a, 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 a we're saying that it's, it's only pool funding. And if you look at it, the, our, our partners are involved in all of these initiatives. As usual, we broker um, partnerships with our 
with our, with our partners, those institutions that are capable of delivering with the CGI centers, and this will continue. Um, I just want to mention also that in terms of capacity development, because a lot of people were, are talking about that, within these um, initiatives, there is a new initiative that we're developing the capture, which is actually taking into consideration this. So there is scope for, for, for partnerships and then um, in different forms, and, and we're trying to cope with that. Um, some of them will latch on to the regional initiatives, um, and, I, and that's my own personal um, take. Some of these in the regions, uh, we need to latch on to the regional initiatives. So my own uh, idea is that these regional initiatives need to grow, and the only way they can grow is by accommodating these um, regional bilateral initiatives that are ongoing. And I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you so much, Harold. Yeah, uh, at least uh, we have uh, good insight that probably could build on the future. Um, uh, I will go now to one question from the uh, chat or from the uh, Q&A box. Uh, do we have funding opportunities, particularly for postgraduate students who wish to continue towards food security and rice research, kindly share the opportunities uh, if they are available? Um, I'll probably ask Inga and, uh, and Nina to see if there is any opportunities to release initiatives for this, and, and, and also Harold and Nina, if you want to add any comments later. So Inga, if you can start. Uh, thanks, Abdul, and, and thanks, Anthony, for, for the question. I think... Um... Certainly from the, the regional initiative in East and Southern Africa, as well as some of our bilateral projects, there are internship opportunities that are linked to projects. But I would say the, the focus that we are adopting at the moment is very much a demand-driven approach, private sector uh, facing. So even with our internships, um, the the idea is to have students be placed with agri SMEs um, that address a very real challenge that they are facing, irrespective of the value chain. So that is our approach. So where uh, agri businesses come to us with a particular uh, challenge or a need, we run ideation sessions uh, with uh, students with incubation hubs, um, and then the winners of that get placed uh, at um, at uh, SMEs through internships. So that's our approach in, in Eastern Southern Africa at the moment, Abdul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For the sake of time, I will move to the next question. Sorry, we are over time already, but uh, please bear with me to take a few more uh, minutes to answer some of these interesting questions. Uh, the second question is, what is transformation? Is it uh, involving 